And this morning's live special phone interview features Slick, radio veteran of Power 1490 and Tech Talk Radio. What's going down, Slick? How you doing? Oh, man, uh, you know I'm not going to be able to get back to that dream while I was chasing that girl. <laughs> well, where was That's that? Right. I, I never had a chance with it anyway. Don't worry about it. That's all right. It's all right, man. Just lived another day, another day. How you doing, man? Where you calling from right about now? Right now, I will tell you, I'm calling from the Secret Studios and Rita Ranch. <laughs> That's what's up, homeboy. That's what's up. I'm very, I'm very happy for you calling us. I was very excited uh, for like a week, a week before. I was just thinking about what to ask you, and uh, I look up to you guys. You know what I'm saying? Like you guys are legends to me, and uh, I appreciate you giving me a call here at KXCI. Yeah, no problem, man. Uh, you know we can't let out all the secrets, though, because, I mean, there were some things that we could still be prosecuted for, you understand? <laughs> oh, snap, oh, snap. Yeah, man, for those that don't uh, know who you are, introduce yourself to the listeners, man. Yeah, let's see. Uh, first time y'all have ever heard me here in Tucson. I arrived in 1980 because of my first ex-wife out at davis Mountain Air Force Base. I was... I was on some radio stations, too many to mention because I've been fired all over this town. But <laughs> <laughs> where I was, uh, where I guess I was the most infamous, if you will, I started out doing mornings on Power 1450, which was KKPW. Uh, I think it was back in the late 80s with Rich Brother Robin and him. And then, uh, you know, where I guess uh, the, the documentary uh, took off this way, you know, when we were doing Power 1490. And that was, uh, the call sign was KJYK, but that was Tucson's first real hip-hop radio station. How cool was that whole experience, and uh, what did you learn from all that? And uh, how did it feel to be part of the music movement here, especially hip-hop in the early 90s? Being a part of the, let me answer the second one first. Being a part of the music movement was great. I mean, I've been on uh, I've been on a few groundbreaking stations, at, but but very few, very few. And and usually you you start out, you make an effort, and then you get squashed. Well, in a sense, you know, if y'all look at the documentary, there's a documentary on the whole thing called AM Mayhem that uh, our our dub put together. Our dub was Slow Jam, SlowJams dot com. Um, you know, we had we had a good run. I. I I got my uh, my wake up call as soon as I landed because I was doing mornings in Denver at at a soul station KDKL in Denver, and uh, yeah, of course got fired there. And then uh, I was given a plane ticket to come here, so I came here and I mean I did my first after the first morning show I did I was called into the office and told uh, we not we're not so sure it's gonna work out. <laughs> so. You know, but they but they hung on to me thanks to Bruce St. James and, and, and management there, Dick Stein and everybody. So you know, that that was that was my first thing that I that I learned working for Power Fourteen Ninety is well it ain't all what they say it's gonna be. You know, they'll and generally kinda reel you in and once you get started you have to find out what, what the what the real is. Definitely, it's on the history books now, man. And uh, that A M Mayhem is a real good documentary, man. I just watched it a couple of days ago. It's uh, like a history lesson for me, especially me, uh, you know, in the hip hop movement here. And I was gonna ask you, uh, do you do you think uh, there's a state of emergency in the in the radio industry? What do you see in uh, today's radio world as opposed from back then? Uh, I'm 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 sadder, I guess. I'm just sadder, and it's big. And this is this is. You know, aimed at put straight at commercial radio, commercial radio stations, because that's that's what they're supposed you know supposed to do. They're supposed to make a buck and then, and give some profits back to their shareholders and stuff like that. But at the same time, as I, as I keep preaching to everybody, I just I just hope somebody will take up arms and go at it. At the same time, if you look at their their directives from the FCC, from the Federal uh, Communications Commission, they're supposed to serve the community. They're supposed to serve the public. They're supposed to serve the audience and people. Let a lot of them get away with not doing that, you know, whether it be music and news or, you know, talk programs or whatever. But instead of taking, you know, taking control of what belongs to the people, you know, they just kind of just switch off or, or just, you know, walk away or whatever. And remember, you know, the airways belong to you. They belong to you. That's, you know, a good example is right here at KXCI. I mean, you know, they're, they're a station that's intended to serve the public and they go at it the best as they can. Now, like I said, you know, the FCC has told radio stations that you can have the airways, you can borrow the airways, but you got to serve the public. So don't, don't forget that. It belongs to you. 
Definitely, definitely. And uh, we were talking about earlier about uh, uh, in New York about power. Uh, was it power? What was the name of the station over there? And they were closing it down, something like that. Yeah, I think when I, when I talked to you, I think I misspoke. Um, all right, and, and everybody's gonna have to do a search and look this up because uh, yeah, for for some reason I can't remember exactly what was going on. But here's the bottom line: in in, in New York City, and I'm from DC, so I've been through this before with some DC radio stations. Uh, there there were some, if you will, heritage radio stations there for hip hop and soul, etc. And I believe I, I said BLS when I was talking to you. I believe it was. Yes, I think the call sign used to be WRKS. And what happened was uh, the company, I'm sure I got the company right, the call MS Communications, uh, they decided that, you know, that they're tired of, of fighting the fight. And so they sold what was what's called the intellectual property, if you will. Um, you know, the music list, the, the, the in a sense, the, the personalities, all that stuff to a competitor and changed their station to sports talk on FM. So... In a sense, you know, from from my view right now, at least when it comes to FM radio in New York, you really only got one FM hip hop station, if you will, and that's that's Hot 97. And I think uh, BLS picked up the intellectual property. WBLS picked up the intele- intellectual property from what used to be Kiss FM. Um, but it's just it's just a whittling down. It's I think what has happened, as has happened in the past, and probably will happen in the future with radio is that the big corporations and companies, once they can't get any more money out of you, they're done with you. So so watch that it went in regards to, I think it's going to translate in regards to the music as far as hip-hop goes. I mean, it was so hard back in the day just to get one rap re- record or, or song, if you will, on the radio without somebody, you know, wanting to shut off the radio station or burn it down. And then we had, you know, so much out there, but it's gotten to the point to where, in my opinion, I think, you know, it's all mass produced for money now, so at some point it's going to swing the other way where we're going to lose a lot of it. You know, they're just going to say, well, we're not playing that anymore. In a way, do you think uh, hip hop is is a music genre that gets discriminated against because of uh, of what it talks about? Um, no, I, you know, it, I, I want to say yes, but at the same time, the answer really is no, because, well, again, I, I think it came down to money, because at first, nobody wanted to hear it. Nobody wanted to hear that it's, you know, it's storytelling, and it's an art form, and, and, and it's in its own, you know, and that it had its place in the world. But then, like I said, when they realized they could make a buck off, it, off of it, oh, now all of a sudden it's all right, you know, until it's not all right anymore. Yeah, you. It's. Yeah, I think it'll come. You know, because it just every everything has its circle. I think it'll come to a point where they figure they can't get enough money out of it, and then they go to what's next, whatever next is. Yeah, we'll see what happens in the upcoming years, man. And uh, what advice can you give somebody like me or anybody else that's trying to get in the in the industry as far as DJing, music, whatever, producing, engineering? What advice could you give a youngster like me? You know what I'm saying, and everybody out there that's listening. I think, in my opinion, I think you gotta you gotta pick a pick a path, and, and I say that just because of my successes and failures. I did radio and still will do radio if I can for the love of it. I just I love radio. I just love radio. So I've done it. I've done it for, as a living. I've also done it for free. Um, and there are others who've done it, you know, for the money and for the business. So I think at some point you're gonna when if you're in there, if you get in there, trying to get in there. You may come to the crossroad, so, so I just want—I just want you to know there may be a crossroad coming up for you if, if you're lucky enough to get in there. Uh, radio can be great, but can also you know, be a bunch of people with big heads, and you know, it's, you would think you would think you're fighting for a, a starring role in a movie in Hollywood, but it ain't all that. You know, it's, it's just people that, that are treating it like all that. So just be careful if you, you do it for the love. But if you're gonna do it for business, I will tell you this: if you're gonna do it for the business. Make your money. Make your money. Definitely, definitely slick. One more uh, question for you, and we're going to get back to the jams right here at 91.3 FM. Where can some of the listeners check out Tech Talk Radio at and uh, any links that you want to share with the listeners out there? And uh, send some shout-outs, brother. All right. Well, first of all, I am trying to make a comeback. Uh, it's, it's been slow and long, but if you hear me screaming and yelling on the frequency in town, it could happen. It could be me. It just might happen to be. 
uh, as far as what I've been doing and am doing, hey, I've been on what we call on the beach for, I don't know, about six years now. I ain't been doing a whole lot. I've been helping out some friends with their businesses and stuff. i uh, tell you about it, but then I have to kill you. Um, <laughs> on, the, on the internet, uh, me and Andy, Andy's been letting me do TechTalkRadio.com with him. Check that out. Um, I've also got a Twitter account. It's you know, Twitter.com forward slash Slick. Uh, been involved in the Tech Buzz out of uh, Pennsylvania. I've oh, been doing Radio Exiles. I've been I let forget Radio Exiles. I was doing it with my old morning show partner, Robert. And I want to warn you, it's, it's unfiltered. And it's more us whining than anything else, to be honest with you. It's just something we get to do once a week. Um... What else am I doing? Uh, those, those, are the, those are the main posts where you can find me on the internet. Usually, uh, Twitter. With, but the past past few days, past weeks, I've been uh, I've been neglecting my Twitter family because of just some other things been been up in my face. But I'm also on Google Plus and Facebook, all that stuff. I'm I'm on it all. But you know what? I will put in a plug for this. Let me put in a plug for AMA Him. There are about four episodes that are available on YouTube right now under R Dub's account. So if you go to YouTube. And do a search on R Dub Five Twenty R D U B Five Two Zero. You can see about the uh, four, if you will, episodes. Of them. I think they're about five minutes a piece or something like that. But you can check it out. And also, if you go to his website, SlowJams.com, you can find out about buying a DVD and checking it out and all that, man. The show definitely, homie. I wish you nothing but success, man. And uh, hopefully, I get to talk to you soon again. And thank you very much for giving us a call right here at Blazing That Three and the A Z. Much, much love, Slick. Thank you very much. Hey, you got the number, man. For sure, for sure. You tune in to 91.3 KXCI Tucson. Real people, real radio. Peace, Slick.